Man, I didn't do anything Halloween related this October. I didn't go to a haunted house. I didn't even get any candy aside from what I stole from my niece and nephew's trick-or-treat buckets. Matter of fact, I don't even remember most of October. I really hope I didn't do anything too crazy. I did watch this dope ass show on Netflix though. Now some of you might be wondering, Brandon, why are you doing this review in your shed? And I was going to do it on the back porch like I've done sometimes. But... There's a big scary spider on the light, and I'm not trying to go back to the hospital because of another spider bite, you feel me? But anyway, I am here to talk to you guys about this year's newest Netflix original series, Haunting of Hill House. Haunting of Hill House became this phenomenon almost overnight, like damn near Stranger Things level. And it's about this family who is very dysfunctional and it all stemmed from something that happened in their childhood home of Hill House. Which is what they call the house that they lived in. I guess I guess it was on a hill. I don't know, you really don't see the outside of the house much, but that's beside the point. And the show flashes back and forth between when this family was younger and they were children to present day when they are adults and the parents are older. So, with this show being such a phenomenon, what do I think about it? I think it's incredible. I had to do everything in my power not to just sit there and binge watch all 10 episodes. I mean, I don't have much of a life, but I do gotta go to work sometimes. One really cool thing about how this show is structured is the first six or seven episodes, I can't really remember right off the top of my head, but each one centers around one member of this family, whether it be one of the children or one of the parents. And you really learn a lot about this family in these episodes, and you learn to like them a whole lot. Some of these characters' stories are just downright heartbreaking. Without getting into major spoilers, the character of Luke was amazing, and he was probably my favorite character on the show, right along with, I feel, almost anybody who watched it. His character just, I feel, had the best arc and the most heart behind him, and I was really rooting for this guy through the whole series. Not only are the characters great, though, it is written like a freaking masterpiece. This show has some of the greatest sibling banter and family arguing that I think has ever been put on a show. Like, I, I've, I see these characters arguing as adults, and I'm like, I have heard almost this exact argument in real life. And the fact that someone was able to pen it so perfectly, I think, is incredible. My favorite episode was probably episode 6. And the entire episode only takes place in two settings. This one room that the entire family is in and in flashbacks in Hill House. What makes this episode just so jaw-dropping, though, is aside from when it cuts to a flashback or back to present, and except for, like, the last four minutes, everything is in one shot. There are no cuts. And if you don't know what a cut is by now, this was a series of cuts. So everything was done all in one take. It was like watching a play. It was incredible. Like, I almost didn't even notice it at first because my buddy Matt had told me that there is an episode where everything is one take. And I was waiting for it as I was watching this show. And then finally when it got to this episode, I'm watching it. And like 10 minutes in, I'm like, wait. Have, have there been any cuts yet? So I rewound it to the beginning of the episode and watched it again. And I was like, 
holy shit. Anytime something is able to go long periods of time being one take and doing it fluidly and not making it look too gimmicky and unnatural, I just love it. I, it is one of my favorite filmmaking techniques and they did it beautifully. Also, the way the episode ends is just freaking heartbreaking. I'm not going to tell you what it is. But I am going to tell you that I teared up a little bit. And I am also not afraid to tell you that in the last episode of, of the season, I teared up a lot. The ending of this season is just so perfect. I've heard some people talking about how they didn't like it, and I get it. There were, like, a couple of points that were pretty um i just had the camera paused for like three minutes and i still can't think of the word but what i'm trying to say is that i saw it coming but there were some other parts of the episode that i was just like what it was just but like not only was it mind-blowing it made a lot of sense sort of kind of like the kind of sense that you're like oh that makes sense but i also just had an aneurysm trying to wrap my mind around it and that happens actually a lot throughout this show. There's a reveal of one thing in particular um, about a character. And once you realize what it is, <laughs> like, I sat there for a long time as the credits rolled, just like, <sighs> I realize I'm doing this motion a lot. <laughs> like, that's what this show does, man. It messes with you. I'm not high, I swear. Now, I've rambled on about how amazing this show is, but does it have any issues? Yes. Not many, really only two. Yes, a 10 episode long season of a show only has two problems, and that is enough that I need to say, but I'll go on. It all stems from the same episode, episode three. Episode three is the episode that centers around the uh, child, Theo. And you're jumping back and forth between present day Theo as a grown woman and flashback Theo as a child. I don't think they ever specify how old Theo is as a kid, but looking at the actress, I'm gonna say like, 10 or 11. I'm awful with child ages though. She could be 15 for all I know. But the issues I have are one with child Theo. There were certain times where her acting was borderline nails on a chalkboard. And that's not to say it's that way through the whole show because there are some really good child acting moments in this show. But in this episode specifically, there were some really bad ones. And the other issue is um, kind of a spoiler. So I'm going to be really vague about it. And I apologize for that. But there's a revelation about the family and something that they all have in common. And I don't like it. It's a plot element that is used in a lot of stuff. And for a hint, I'll say that it happens a lot in Stephen King stories. But it's a plot element that oftentimes I personally just don't like. I said something to my dad about it who was also watching the show. And he said I was just being too nitpicky. But... Hi, this is a review series. All I do is give my opinions on things. So my opinion is that this plot element, which is something that all of these characters in this family have in common, especially Theo, is just something that I don't like. And it's not just with this show, it's in general. Now, to grade this show, I realize that... Usually, I don't grade shows. I just tell you whether you should or shouldn't watch it. But my friend Matt actually gave me a really cool idea on how to grade a show differently than how I grade movies. 
So, as opposed to a movie, which has five grades, the typical A, B, C, D, or F, a show will have sentence grades, and there are four of them. It will be binge it, watch it, skim it, or skip it. To explain if I need to, binge it is essentially watch it right now and watch all of it. Watch it is watch it at your leisure, no big rush. Skim it is check out the first couple of episodes, see what you think, if you like it, whatever, if you don't, whatever. Skip it is obvious. So, with this new grading system of television shows in mind, I'm going to say that when it comes to Haunting of Hill House, you should definitely binge it. Editor's note from the future, I talked so much that I forgot to even talk about what is probably the main pull of this show, and that is how scary, unsettling, and unnerving it can be. There were so many scenes that just had me gripping the edge of my seat and jumping out of my skin. There was one jump scare in particular that literally had me speechless for like 10 seconds before I even reacted. It was so well done. I've hardly ever seen a jump scare that was that effective, and it was like like near the one of the final episodes of the season. And there's also all of those hidden Easter egg ghosts that they hid in the background of Hill House that you have to like keep your eye out for. And if you find them, it will like you'll be like, what is that? It's so well done. So yeah, I just wanted to make sure that I say that before this video officially ends. So now I'm done. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I am so excited to be back to just doing regular reviews. And you may see me bouncing around from different locations from time to time, but you got to do what you got to do when extenuating circumstances come into play. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you would like, you should go check out my Facebook page, which I have set up. I will put the link to that in the description. And also, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe so that I can see you guys next Friday.